Hello everyone, welcome back to this final episode. Today, it's all about escalating our privileges. Let's get started. Welcome to the Hackerish channel. For those of you who don't know me, I just love hacking targets and learn along the way and share with you tips and techniques to help you in your ethical hacking journey. We've gone through a lot of things like how to bypass filters in a SQL injection, how to exploit local file inclusion, how to use it to get command injection using a unrestricted file upload. Uh, we've bypassed the protections on the file upload to put arbitrary PHP code. I mean, we've done a lot of things. I invite you to go back and see the whole episodes, which we're going to find the links in the description box below. And uh, if you are one of the lucky persons throughout this challenge, there's a hidden string that if you find it, and you're one of the first three people to find it. It's a coupon that's 100% discount on my course, how to become a penetration tester. I can't wait to see you there. So we're running as WW data. Do we have anything interesting inside those files? Because the application has a MySQL database, I think the credentials should be somewhere right here. So I'm going to look for localhost on the files under uh, var www. And right away we see we have under c.php the connection string. We have the user uh, bill you and the password box bill you. So let's use that to connect the, to the database from PHP my folder we found on the first episode. Uh, make sure to watch the previous videos in the penetration testing playlist. So if you go to playlists, there are about 100 videos just like these. You will learn a lot of things. So go ahead and give it a try. Uh, the username was build you and the password allows us to access indeed the database ICA underscore lab. Okay, we have auth, we have download. So download contains the image name and the location on the server. Uh, users contains the name of the users that we have. Remember, we have a list of users which are right here. This is the same as we have here. And we have the table auth which was used in the SQL injection vulnerability we've exploited in the second episode. And here is the plain text username and password used to access this application. This is a big no-no if you're a developer and are seeing this. Just make sure that you are protecting your passwords, hashing, insulting. You never store your passwords in plain text. All right, where else do we have? A thing really interesting in the database. Let's find the SUID bit scripts. So we have a bunch of scripts, which are just the classic ones. I don't see anything here that pops up. And let's see the writable files that we can edit. Oh, we have a bunch, but uh, we have the var www image that we've uploaded. And we have a bunch of other uh, files that wouldn't be interesting for our purpose. Our purpose is to get local root on that box. All right, um, let's uh, cat etc release. Oh, so it's running a uh, a bit outdated version of Ubuntu 12 and the kernel is also a little bit old. Do we have GCC? Yes, we do. Uh, do we have access to the internet? HTTPS, the hackerish.com. Yep, it seems that we have access, although we had an error, uh, TLS error, because the client of curl is so old, I guess. So, um, Let's uh, look for a local privilege escalation exploit. So Ubuntu 12 local exploit. And it seems that we have a bunch of uh, right here. Let's look for the first one. So the first one is overlay FS local privilege escalation and it's targeting the kernel uh, version. I'm not sure if I fall into the same range. 3.13, yep we are within the range of the vulnerable kernels. And we do have Ubuntu, Ubuntu 
So what I can do is uh, grab that script and the way to use it is just use GCC to compile it and then run it. Doesn't get easier than that. So I'm going to copy that um, or actually let's view the raw version. Just download the file. So wget and then our file. Oh, unable to establish SSL connection. SSL version one. Yeah, I guess wget also uses uh, old cipher suit. So I'm going to use a base64 encoding trick in order to transfer the file. So I'm going to download it locally and then I'm going to use base64 to encode that script. I'm going to copy it. It's not that long. And I'm going to paste it in the temp directory using cat. I'm going to redirect the content to base64 file and end the paste with the end of file string. Paste in the content. I'm going to hit enter and then end of file. Now if I do base64-d to decode that file, I should be able to get my exploit.c file. And if I use the file command, indeed it's an ASCII and the content is nothing but our script. So the instructions said we need to produce a file using GCC and it worked. So we have now a file called E, which is an ELF 32 bit executable. That's now we're running as WW data. If we run now our script, we get root. If we go to slash root, so we are indeed root. I'm going to give you other discounts in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell and I'll see you in the next challenge. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.